morning, people of the world. We're in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on a very special mission. I have a load in my trailer that's only 6,000 pounds. It's going to Laredo, Texas. So I'm going right down the I-29 I corridor from the Canadian border right down to the Mexican border. We're not crossing into Mexico, but we're going right up there in Laredo delivering to a location that's literally within eyesight of the Mexican border and the Rio Grande. I haven't been down that far in a long time, so it's special. And I gotta make sure I can see where I'm going. Every morning, all day. Glasses, this is the struggle of having glasses, you know? Keeping them clean without scratching them. I use these uh, moist papers, uh, what are they called? They're like, like these. I found that using stuff like this, it's just worth the cost, because everything else scratches them. But this keeps them nice and clean. A little bit worried about Chevy back at home, our big golden fluffer, or big golden dog. He's gotten an eye infections in both eyes, and we don't know why. Uh, he's being rushed into, well, he's being brought into the emergency vet in Winnipeg by Brit because all the other vets are closed. When I'm filming this, it's a little bit in the past, it takes me a little while to get these out to you. When I'm filming this, it's New Year's Eve. So I'm hoping to catch some fireworks sometime tonight here in the United States somewhere, but that's a different story. Right now I'm kind of concerned about Chevy. Uh, he had to go in there because all the other vets were closed. And uh, I think Britt's dad is coming to help with Theo at the time because it's going to be very overwhelming taking a big dog like that into a vet in Winnipeg uh, with a baby in tow yet too. So he's uh, he's going to go there. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. Very thankful that he was able to go there and help her today uh, because I'm out here working. So I'm waiting for an update. I got a reminder. Please keep me updated. Smiley face. I know she's really stressed right now, so I don't want to overwhelm her with more stuff. Uh, please keep me updated. I'll just send that. I think that's good. I don't want to overwhelm her with anything more. Like, just if she has time, if she understands, just if you have time, send me a message to let me know how it's going. Uh, his eyes became like kind of uh, irritated yesterday as I was leaving. Of course, just as I leave to work, right? And uh, today apparently they gotten worse and they were starting to pus a little bit. And uh, she called the vet in town. Obviously they're closed today. The only one that's open is the emergency vet, which is over an hour away in Winnipeg. So it's a bit of a hike to get there. It's not a life or death situation for him right now, but uh, it's going to be a very stressful day for Britt back at home. So I'm going to be uh, a little bit off and worried thinking about her and everything going on there. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to make it down close to Oklahoma City tonight. I'm hoping to go there. Uh, Oklahoma's got some cheap juice. Diesel prices there for me are like two, below $3 a gallon, like two eighty eight dollars on my fuel card from what my uh, info here is telling me. Like, <laughs> Oklahoma, I like you. I'm gonna fill up my tanks in your state and give you some of my money. How's that sound? I won't quite make it there on the fuel I have now. I have half tanks and it's a thousand kilometers or 600 miles, approximately. A little less than that, probably 500. Well, we'll see. It's a full day of driving to get there and I don't think I'll have quite enough. So what I'm gonna do is the next cheapest is in Iowa here in Council Bluffs, just down the road a little while, a little ways. I'm gonna go there and maybe top up one tank just, just enough so that I'm sure I can get there. And then I'll fuel tonight or tomorrow morning in Oklahoma City. I'm gonna try to do it tonight if I can because I've done it before and you guys have seen this, where I go to bed and I'm like, oh, the fuel prices are cheap here, I'll fuel in the morning. And I wake up in the morning and the fuel prices went up. So, you know, when you see a low fuel price, you go for it, now! And you can't can't wait till tomorrow because they'll, they'll get you that way. I've already done my whole pre-trip and uh, gotten that out of the way. This is where we're at. Old Blue's warming up. I'm probably gonna have to take this off today. Maybe when I fuel up. Maybe when I fuel up in Iowa, we'll see what the temperature's gonna be like, but I know that this front is gonna be coming off either today or tomorrow. It's gonna be too warm for it down there. We got the 53 foot flatbed roll tight behind us. And only about two thirds of the trailer is loaded. 
but it is a full load. Got probably about up to this axle here. Back is empty, so it's a really good load to take down, nice and light. Light as a feather, I might as well practically be empty. The thing that costs me the most fuel is that there, that wall. You see how much higher it is in my truck? That is not what they would call aerodynamic, but uh, neither is this. <laughs> like I said yesterday, I drive W900. I don't know what fuel economy is. <laughs> I love it though. I love it, this is my truck. Okay, I'm ready. Trailer is attached, it's coming with me, brakes work and the brakes release. Fantastic. Let's continue our trip. This was a Casey's truck stop that I stopped at. They always have really nice uh, food and stuff inside as well. Not like restaurants or anything, but you know, they got some pizza, some chicken. They got a decent selection. Healthy stuff and non-healthy stuff. 400 meters, turn left on. Sundowner Avenue and then turn left into 110 meters. I am way too nice again. Oh, 2 I-29, gotta go straight. Okay. That sign right in front of us there off to the right, they want us to go straight. Okay. I was gonna go left. Shortcut. I believe it's Highway 75. A little bit of a shortcut that takes us straight to Interstate 35, and uh, we don't gotta go through the city, which is good. We can avoid that mess. forget that masterpiece on the bridge. Woo! I don't even know what it is, but I remember it. 
there's a story behind it. I learned it once. I vlogged going through here probably like, I don't know, eight years ago or something, eight, nine years ago. And uh, the, this artwork on the bridge does mean something. It's sort of like that modern art, you know, modern art that doesn't really have to make sense, but the meaning behind it is the true art. I'm not trying to make fun of it, don't, don't take it that way. But here, take a look at it. I'm gonna go around the corner to the left here. Take a look at it and tell me what you think. Here it comes. I mean, it doesn't look bad, right? Kind of looks kind of neat, interesting. But without knowing the story behind it and what it means to the artist. Meters, turn right on. Like 27th Avenue MN, approaching destination on the left side. Karen, I'm trying to tell a story here. Without knowing like what the artist meters, intended. Turn right on. 27th Avenue MN, approaching destination on the left side. Sorry guys, she will not stop meters. talking over me. Rude, Karen, that's rude. You get what I was trying to say though, right? How, how can you possibly know what they're trying to tell you? Maybe that sort of ins is supposed to inspire us to research it and Google it. I could always do that. So here's the pilot off on our left here. They got some juice. It's not the cheapest juice on my road, but it is the cheapest juice until I get to the cheapest. Destination on the left side. I know. Pilot Travel Center. Karen, you don't have to always talk over me, you know? You could just let me talk every now and then. It's Trucker Josh vlogs, not Trucker GPS Karen vlogs. Always. Oh, and these guys are parked back here, which makes it harder to get into the pumps. Very nice. That won't be a problem for me, though. I'm going to go to this one right here. First pump. That's a terrible spot for those guys to park. But for now, it's open. Tell the government what we're doing, because we're changing our duty status. We're no longer driving, now we're working not driving. We're fueling. They have to know. They're nosy people. Okay. So I'm sitting at, oh, I should have looked before I stopped. I'm think, think, I think I'm at just about below half tank here. Wait for this thing to boot up. One sec, let me grab you. Okay, come here, come here. That's what we're sitting at for fuel. Let's go grab some fuel. You have five hours and five minutes of remaining drive time. Well, okay then. What I'm probably gonna do is once I'm done fueling here, I'm gonna move to a parking spot and make this my half hour break. So that I get my eight hours, let's see. Eight, eight hours, 11. No, wait, shoot. I'd lose five minutes then because I still have eight hours and five minutes of drive time available. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna fuel and go. And we'll take our half hour break a little ways down the road. Otherwise I lose five minutes of drive time because I have eight hours and five minutes left. Huh. Well, how about that? Okay, let's just fuel and go. Uh, the guy in Oklahoma City, uh, I want to give you a shout out. Your name's Rob. Uh, thanks for reaching out to me through email and uh, explaining your whole situation that you're in right now. And uh, I wish you all the best. I really wish I, I really, really do wish I could stop by and say hello. Uh, maybe on the way back up. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, depends on which direction they're they're sending me from Laredo. I might be coming straight back north right through here. Maybe it'll work out. But I do wish you all the best and a happy new year. As happy as we can make it. All right, so we bought 50 gallons of fuel. 400 and uh, where, where is it here? 189 liters. Cost me $153 American. $203 Canadian. Price was $3.07 per gallon US or in Canadian, all conversions included, a dollar and seven and a half cents. So 107.5 cent, a dollar seven per liter. Way cheaper than back home. Tell you that much. 
All right, God bless America. Speaking of which, let's continue on down to Mexico. Mexico border. Not going into Mexico. Here we go. Lights are on. Looks like this place is packed right full already. Yikes. These are the kind of parking spots. Oh, there's some available here, though that guy is taking up two or three. Really? These are uh, the parking lots, parking lots that are very risky to park in. Then there's these guys who like, what's going on here? Yes, this is the exit truck exit. And that's Sap Brothers right across the street. Oh, there's a blue beacon here. Oh, I wonder if there's a lineup. I wonder if there's a lineup. Oh boy. I'm gonna go look, I'm gonna go look. I was thinking of washing the truck tomorrow, but. I wanna go straight across. And that guy wants to turn in front of me. I'll let him go first. Go, 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 buddy. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Blue Beacon. I didn't even notice you were here. What's this guy doing now? Oh, I'll turn my radio on just in case someone's chirping. I had to turn the volume down before. They have three bays here. Oh, wow. Oh, but it's closed. Truck wash. You can see it over there. They have a bar across the entrance. I know the fisheye lens. Oh, because it's New Year's Eve. Of course. Of course, of course. Okay. Well, I don't know what this guy's doing, but I was going to do exactly what he's doing. I just need to turn around. Okay, well, I'll just go left then. That's right, it's New Year's Eve. He's got his fancy rims. Fancy, fancy. Shoot, yeah, closed. Probably closed early. You can tell they were open today at some point. This is all wet from trucks that have come out of there. We're too late. And tomorrow's New Year's Day, so no Blue Beacon will be open tomorrow either. Shoot. All right, I guess we gotta just... How do I get out of here now? There, this is an exit. There we go. We're going this way. Guess I should have maybe gone there first. What's the time now? Time is four o'clock. I bet you they closed at four o'clock. Shoot. Should have gone there, then fueled. I did not realize. Onward then with a dirty truck. Sorry, old blue. I tried. Gotta wait a day or two. I am too nice. I should have gone in front of this guy. I'm gonna go in front of those guys though. Yep, 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 yep. 300 meters, turn right on 23rd Avenue. Here's these art pieces up here again. Come on, guys, pick it up. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I gotta get in this lane, though. There we go. There we go. All right, we're all set. We got everything figured out here, I think. And we get back on Interstate 29 southbound. And I believe it's 75 that we take to take a little shortcut north of Kansas City, because Kansas City sort of veers off to the east, and I-29 is coming south like this, right? And the shortcut sort of just cuts straight through here, and the I-29 comes around like this, and you can just sort of take a shortcut, and it meets up with I-35, which takes us right down to Laredo, right to Mexico.
we go. Now we cruise. So those pumps were so slow that we ended up staying there a half hour anyways. It took 20 minutes. Just over 20, I think it was 22 minutes. 29 South, that is not right. That would be left, Karen. Don't mislead me. They must have changed this. No one told Karen. We don't want to take the I-80 eastbound. Why are you telling me to take the I-80 east? Meters, to the on south. No, I'm going to keep to the left on I-29 South. What's wrong with you? Come on, Karen. Get with the times here. Update. Didn't I just update you last week? I wonder how long ago they changed all of this because it hasn't updated in my GPS yet. And that was done recently. Must have been. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, anyways, it took 22 minutes to fill up 50 gallons. Honestly. I didn't even fill up the whole, I didn't even fill up halfway, like 50 gallons. That's how slow that pump was. Which is interesting, because a lot of the pumps I've been going to, like St. Cloud, Minnesota, has been really slow lately too. Grand Forks was really slow. Is this like a new thing that they're doing at Flying J? Slow pumps. At 22 minutes for 50 gallons. And then I pulled forward, I went inside, uh, grabbed a coffee, went to the bathroom, and a little bit of a lineup inside. By the time I came out, there was still no one behind me because I had pulled forward, and I had reached my 30 minutes. So <laughs> I was like, the only time you'll ever see Trucker Josh taking his 30 minutes <laughs> in the pumps. I, not on purpose. We have departed from I-29 and we're now on number two west, Iowa. Looks like we are gonna cross into Nebraska right up here over the hill. The Missouri River. Crossing border, entering Nebraska. Nebraska, their slogan is dot 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 the good life. If you ever wondered where the good life is, it's in Nebraska. Now you know. Oh, this is one of those funny intersections. Turning on to 75 South towards Auburn. Slight left. Well, I see that. We're already in it. Telling us this before we get here, right? 
most places I would Continue assume would have a card. For 192 kilometers. I mean, I don't have much cash on me, a little bit, but I guess we're gonna find out. So we got on this toll road uh, as soon as we got onto the 35, right? The turnpike there. And we went all the way past Wichita. Now we're down south, getting close to the Oklahoma border. And this is where we got to pay our, Continue our on this toll. road for 192 kilometers. It says cash. I bet you they're just going to ask me for cash. I got to give them this uh, ticket, I guess. I'm staying to the right here because it's a little bit more space to get through. I don't want to go through that narrow thing. Okay, I'm going to give them my little my ticket here. We'll see how much this costs and how I got to pay for this. Twenty-five. Is it? You can take a card. Awesome. That was my question. All the signs just say cash, cash, cash. I don't come through here that often, so. Visa. Thanks, you too. That answers that question. into a Love's north of Oklahoma City on I-35 in Oklahoma. According to my Trucker Path app, all the truck stops in the city are full. That's okay, I didn't really want to stay in the city anyways, I can't quite get there. So there's either this truck stop here, I'm just pulling in here just to check. I'm pretty sure it's going to be full, at least I think. Maybe not, but if it is full, my next option is to go to Cowboys Travel Plaza, which is just like another 15, 20 miles down the road south. Oh, it looks like there's some parking available here. Let's see if I can find a good spot. There's like a little Ma and Pa truck stop down the road that I was thinking of going to if I couldn't find any parking here, but I might get lucky. Oh, I will get lucky. Oh my, there's like nobody here. Oh, that's because it's New Year's. Everybody's at home. That's right. That's right. Oh, okay, good. Well, then we're staying here for the night. Why are all the spots numbered, though? Do we have to pay? spots are numbered. Usually that means you got to pay for your spot. Uh, I don't like that. But it is what it is if that's the case. We'll find out. Now I found a great spot here. But we're going to have to do some research. Come with me. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come here. All right. Usually when they number the spots like this, that means you've got to pay for your specific spot. And the fact that it's so empty here also kind of tells me that it might be paid parking because most truckers then would not park here. That's one way to kill your business. At the truck stop, you want to kill your business and scare away all of your customers that you need to make business. Charge them for parking. You will... <laughs> That's one way just to <laughs> your business, okay? Just heads up here for my trucker. Been driving for a while. I'm gonna tell you right now that if they're gonna charge me to park here tonight, I am not staying here, I am leaving. As most other drivers would do. You wanna make money? That's not the way to do it. The reason for that is simple. I am mandated by law to stop. The government tells me that I have to stop. Right now, I, I have tons of energy. I feel like I, I could drive for like another four or five hours. I, I'm not ready to park. I couldn't fall asleep even if I tried right now. 
but the government says I have to stop. So I have to stop, I have no choice. I have a little bit more time if I need to get down the road if they're gonna charge me, but if I'm gonna be told by the government that I have to stop by penalty of law, they could even throw you in prison. I mean, it's the only one of the only jobs in the world where you could actually go to prison for working overtime. They don't like it if you wanna work. So uh, both sides of the border, Canada and the US, they both mandate us, a little bit different rules, but same idea. So if you're gonna charge me to park when I don't want to park, but I'm being told by the government that I have to park, that does not make me a happy trucker. If that's the case, if you want to charge us for parking, I think the government should pay for it because they're the ones that are telling us to park. Because I wouldn't be parking here if they wouldn't have told me to park. So that responsibility is about, you want to charge somebody, charge them. I'm sorry, my truck has got to stop and it's not my choice. So I shouldn't have to pay. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know down below in the comment section. I just want to quickly update you on the Chevy situation uh, because I, I forgot to at the end of this vlog. So Chevy's okay. Is, uh, he'll be just fine. He has pink eye in both eyes. Both eyes. So we have some antibiotics. Britt's got all the medication she needs for him. And he'll be okay. Uh, this has happened to our little wiener dog before too. Um, the cause of this is a little bit disturbing, a little bit gross, so fair warning. Uh, we have to be very careful to pick up all the droppings, all the poop from our dogs all the time because two of our dogs like to uh, pick it up for us if we don't by eating it. Okay, I told you it's gross. Uh, so we have to be actively stop them from doing that. We have tried everything and we're still trying to make this stop but it's a it's a thing that we have so what's most likely happening is that one of them finds a little uh, present and a little snack a little brownie outside eats it and we don't realize it or we don't catch them in time and then when we go inside they clean each other sometimes they lick each other's faces and stuff to clean each other and some of that gets into another one's eye causing an infection. It's gross and that's the most likely scenario of what happened. We don't know for sure if that's what happened. We just, that's, that's just what makes the most sense. We've tried giving them those treats or whatever that, that it's supposed to make their droppings taste bad so that they don't want to eat it. It doesn't work. Oh, we've tried many other things and we'll continue to keep trying to get them to curb that behavior but Sometimes a dog's just gonna be a dog, you know? So that's the situation, that's what happened. But Chevy will be just fine. He got the care he needed. Uh, total cost, I think, was a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, 300 and some dollars Canadian for this. So, uh, it is what it is, right? Our dogs are part of the family. And uh, when things go wrong, you gotta take care of them and uh, we'll just take more steps again and renew our uh, efforts to try to curb that behavior or catch it before it even happens but he's gonna be all right so good news take care everybody uh, sorry to leave you on that gross note but it is what it is I'll see you tomorrow please if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe drive safe on the roads out there pay attention keep your stick on the ice see you tomorrow